Hey everybody and welcome back for another Warp Forge video. Uh, thank you so much for the folks who tuned in for my first Warp Forge video. I hope it gave a bit of an overview um, and it is a long one. So if you haven't seen it, uh, feel free to just throw that on when you're just chilling or if you're just really looking to consume Warp Forge content as this game, I think uh, will just get more popular as more people are able to play it with the alpha keys that have been going out actually over the last I think a couple of days, you know, streamers have been getting them, giving them out. I've been getting to tune in for some of those and just trying to answer questions for those who hadn't really even seen the game yet. Um, and today, I think we are just going to take a little bit more of a detailed deep dive into Ultramarines. Now, I have not opened a ton of Ultramarines cards, um, but I think I have a pretty serviceable deck. And I think the, the deck in general teaches you kind of the fundamentals of the game. And also Uriel, this specific Warlord, I think is just really, really good into a few of the decks that we're probably going to see or play against. Um, and I've gone back and forth between Chaos Marines and Ultramarines, and Chaos Marines definitely scale a bit better. But I also just really like uh, this Warlord in particular, and kind of a more aggressive strategy, definitely as you're learning the game, uh, tends to be a little bit easier to put together. Uh, rather than one that's a bit more synergistic. Um, so I thought today we would just do a bit of a deep dive. So uh, buckle up. Let's talk about Ultramarines. All right. So we've got Uriel Ventress. As I went over in the first video, for those who caught the Ultramarines part, his card that he gets access to every turn is called Master of the Fleet, um, which deals one damage to an enemy and adjacent units. And the reason... This card is just like so spammable and such a good thing is it's all you're always trading up in terms of damage, right? Because you're able to do three damage to them when they're usually able to do two to you. Obviously, other uh, warlords have a similar ability that can exchange damage. But one of the things that Master of the Fleet really enables you to do, um, let's use Eldar as an example. For those who have gotten to see their gameplay, you know that some of their... Uh, different uh, creatures or units leave behind something called a waystone and you have the option to attack that for zero damage to your unit to destroy it so that your opponent can't collect that waystone what master of the fleet allows you to do is just to trade on their unit um, and then master of the fleet to kill whatever waystones are left behind which i think is really really powerful and although chaos marines with harkin specifically can deal with that uh, because it, it does like that sort of blast damage, you need another unit to be able to kill the Waystone. So Master of the Fleet just allows you to do it all between your Warlord and your card rather than having to make sure that you have another unit on the board. And I've just been generally pretty impressed with what this um, Warlord can do when you're surrounded by some aggressive, just efficient damage-based cards, uh, removal or uh, units. So I think it also is just a really great example of an aggressive deck that has a very streamlined strategy. And so I haven't changed a ton from the starter deck because I haven't had I haven't opened that many Ultramarine packs. Um, but I think uh, since we're getting to know the Warlord, we might as well get to know the deck that I've changed a bit. So here we have our Ultramarines deck. And something you'll notice um, in my first video is I had quite a few... I think seven, eight, and 10 drops in here. Now, those might be good in, in a certain configuration, but I've just found that when you're able to just hit your codex very reliably um, and play some of the more efficient cards, because I just think when you start getting to seven, eight, and 10 costs, um, they can really just sit in your hand and do nothing. And I think topping out at six or probably seven or eight at max, because you're... Master of the Fleet costs two energy to cast. Um, I think that's more the way to go because I think the way I'm sort of constructing this deck is not necessarily that we have to use the Master of the Fleet ability every single turn, but having the option to when your mana costs are a little bit skewed towards the lower end and you have a bit more of an aggressive bent to your deck. For Ultramarines, I, I just feel like that's that's worked better. Okay, so what does it actually look like, right? Um, and, and I think we'll just go through the cards uh, just because this will be our first kind of deep dive on Ultramarines. So 
Uh, Sacred Bolter, nothing to write home about. It's just one energy to give uh, a unit plus two ranged attack. Um, and just, you know, one energy for plus two, not too bad. Um, sometimes in a pinch, you really need to kill something with your ranged attack. And so this is just a nice little cheap trick. Um, and then we've got Scout, which, uh, you know, again, nothing too, too powerful, obviously, for, for a one energy cost card. Um, but just sometimes really efficient. Uh, it's got two uh, ranged, if you do happen to get to attack with it. Um, and it's one damage when it comes to the play. Can't be targeted by, like, let's say the, uh, what is it? I think it's like the Neuro, Neuro something uh, Tyranid that deals one damage to something. And it also can't be targeted by the Necron ability either. Um, and don't worry, we'll definitely be working on a Necron deck uh, as soon as we can get more gold and open those packs. Um, so a scout like this, I don't really know that you need to play this card, but I don't have a ton of cards and it's just pretty efficient. I will say having like a couple one costs in here allows you to hit your codex and we'll talk about what that is um, because on certain turns you do want odd number uh, casting cost uh, units. Then we've got Assault Intercessor. I, I've generally just been impressed with these kind of cheap Vanguard cards. Um, they're often just able to soak two attacks, um, and in a pinch, they maybe save you much more life. You know, I, I would think about this, um, for those of you who might be joining uh, from Spellslingers, you know, you play something like a Birds of Paradise, right? It's not like a powerful card, um, but it feels like you're getting away with something when not only do you get a, a mana off of it, but it blocks a creature for three, four, five damage, right? And that's kind of how this plays because Vanguard says you have to attack the Vanguard unit first and it has three health. At the very least, it's soaking up a Warlord attack and a Warlord ability, right? Which is probably going to be one to two energy to do that. Um, so I, I just think that cards like this, obviously I don't have access to a ton of other cards. I'm sure there are better ones, but I think starting out, it's a totally serviceable uh, two drop. Firstborn, I really like. Um, this is our first instance of Codex, right? It just says, does something when you use up all your energy. And that's each turn, right? So it's a recurrent thing. That's why when I say we want to hit our Codex every single turn we can, we're just going to get so, so much value. Even though this only says Codex deal one damage to a random enemy, obviously you can't control where the damage goes. It's just really efficient, right? It's two energy. It can potentially use this range attack for two and it's got three health so it's probably going to survive one attack or it'll die to an attack plus a warlord ability you've gotten one damage out of it uh plus maybe another damage right and it just tends to be pretty good um i i like it as you know in the sort of aggressive deck and it's easy to pair that with your master of the fleet ability as well so i'll probably play more of that when i have it also just got point blank shot i love the art on this card um, something about this art for this Space Marine, this Ultramarine, reminds me of like when I was playing the games back in the day. Um, and it's just two energy to deal two damage. Uh, I just got this. I think it's good. It's obviously I can use it in combination to deal direct damage to the opponent's Warlord, even if they have Vanguard up. Direct damage just hits them, um, so it might be good for closing out the game. Or basically, you're it's a shock, right? You're two energy to deal two damage. Um, it's a little bit more costly technically than a shock, but still, I think, pretty useful. Um, and then we've got the Primaris Intercess Intercessor. I'm sure we'll replace these at some point, but for now, two energy, three health. Okay, fine. So it's maybe going to get two attacks off or like an attack and take a hit. Um, two, two, you know, totally serviceable, I think. All right, now we get into um, some cards that I think are obviously not terribly powerful, but just have like a really nice role to play in the deck so uh the the company bike i think is just great because although it is three energy for a two health card it comes in deals two and it's got even three ranged attack too if it, if they happen to maybe overlook it somehow um or if you've got vanguard units you get to smack back for three um this just being able to come in pick off a unit and then take an attack from the warlord is just you know, it's a two for one right it's just you don't really need to question too much about that um, Hellblaster, again, this uh, this card like should often be a two for one. It's got four health, right? So it hopefully can withstand uh, your opponent's attack on their turn, 
and then you get to hit something for three and then blast out for two, which is it deals adjacent damage. Um, two, two damage to adjacent units, which I think for three mana or three energy, dang, I thought I was going to get through the whole video, but I <laughs> only made it probably like five minutes. Um, I, I think this, again, it's just kind of a, a cheap, aggressive, kind of efficient card, and that's why we're running a couple of those. Here is Respite, just uh, very typical divination, right, for those of you who know. Um, three energy, draw two cards. Uh, and, and I was kind of thinking about adding another one, but I, I might just fire up what we have for now. Primaris Interceptor, love this card. Um, just most of the time it's coming down and getting to eat something. It's not quite as good as the other Eldar um, or Eldari like vehicles because a lot of those have snipe and flank. Um, and this doesn't have snipe. If it did, it would be a lot better. Um, but it's still usually fine. You're usually going to get your two for one out of it. Um, and for three energy, totally serviceable. Tyranid Hunter, nothing to write home about. It's always going to be a 3-3 three, three for three because it counts the Warlord. And then um, if you get anything above that, uh, you know, maybe you're getting a little bit of extra value. Um, and, you know, it's good to, it's important to note that we've got kind of an interesting spread of like odd and even cost cards. And when we think about Codex, we do want to have the ability to hit our codex on odd turns um and obviously you know having some kind of a variety of three drops can be pretty good honestly i'm the most excited about company bike and hell blaster i think they're probably your most efficient turn three plays um and aside from interceptor if you want to take out a unit now we get to some of what i would say are like the core if they get kind of snowballing cards it's going to be hard for your opponent so apothecary very efficient card. Four health, four energy, four, four heals when it comes into play, most likely because you're going to get your codex first time you play it. And then it's just gravy when you get it any, any more than that. Um, sometimes when you're able to set this up uh, later on in the game and having a Vanguard unit in front of it obviously gets a little bit better because it's able to heal more. So we're running two of those. We're running two Honor Guard, just four, four, four energy, five health uh, Vanguard. So this is just a, kind of a beefy person. They're going to have to hit through this quite a bit or maybe use a removal spell on it. We've got Sergeant Electus. Um, I think I said this in the first video. Blind is a very strong ability because what it allows you to do is to not take retaliate damage. So when you're able to blind one of their better units or even blind their Warlord and get a couple of free hits in, um, this card's just great. Now, it's not often going to, like, live, I would say, at the, at the point. Like, you'll probably get your one your one blind proc. Um, but if you get more than that, it's it, you're really going to run away with the game with uh, the Sergeant. Storm Raven. Um, do you need two of this card? I'm not quite sure yet, but I think it's relatively efficient for what it does. And often you can pair it on turn six with your Master of the Fleet ability. So basically you're just dealing three damage to at least you know those three units this deals two damage to all enemy units so if they have more it's going to get a little bit more value and it just tends to be pretty good against any deck that's going to be trying to fan out which is usually orcs necrons and even the eldar do a bit of that themselves um now we move on so so our four drops are kind of like to me it feels like when we are landing our four drops they need to be impacting the board and every single one does. You're healing to, you're vanguarding your units, you're blinding your enemies, um, or you're just removing multiple enemies. So I think that your four drops are doing plenty of work. Um, Aggressor Sergeant, I think it's just, again, very efficient card. Five energy, five health, five, five, but it also blasts two. Um, so it's just gonna be able to help clean up the board or set up your Master of the Fleets. Or, or your Storm Raven turns. And then we get into some one ofs because we definitely don't have a huge collection, but I think some of these cards are really excellent. Company Agent, 5-5 five, five for 5, just like the other unit, but it gives all your troops plus 1 melee, plus 1 range attack. So um, just a really efficient card that also buffs your board. Nothing much to say about that. Inspired Retribution, said this in the first video. Um, I will definitely play two copies of this when I get it. Just the ability to take some of the most, like, really troublesome cards, whether they're Vanguard units or they're, they've got, like, Regen or they've got, I mean, I guess those are, those are the two, or Armor, 
um, that are really hard to punch through, Inspired Retribution is going to be the card that, that gets you through it. Uh, Primaris Impulsor, just a great card. I mean, eventually I'd love to actually cut these Intercessors from our deck because this card actually makes it when you Codex. Um, and it just uh, it tends to usually survive a hit, attack for four, and you get a 2-2 body that has three health um, for five energy, which is definitely a pretty overall uh, efficient card. I'm running one of the Blade Guard veterans, just a really beefy Vanguard that uh, gets to heal itself and it attacks for a huge amount. So a lot of times you get to play this, it lives, maybe you get an attack, Codex heals back up, they have to attack it again. Uh, that's, I, I would say that's probably the best, sort of the, the uh, ceiling of the card. But on the floor, it's going to trade for something big that they have usually and soak up some damage, so not too bad. And then Interceptor Sergeant, I believe I said it in the first video as well. Um, this card's just always going to be a two for one. It comes down, it mows something down for six range damage. It's got flying. They usually have to trade something into it, um, and it just does a ton of work. Even if you play it when it doesn't have a great target and then next turn it attacks their Warlord for six, it tends to be good. And that is the top of our curve. Um, I've just found that when you start getting to like 7, 8, 9, or 7, 8, 10, which are some of the other slots we could have put in, um, I just usually have a bunch of cards in my hand anyway, and we're not really playing them, and I, and I think I'd just rather have our overall uh, curve be lower. So that's where I ended up with this deck, um, and I've gotten to test it a bit here and there. So why don't we just run this on the ladder and see what happens. Okay, most likely going to be a computer here, but we will get to see a bit of the power of the Ultramarines into the Orcs. And it's definitely good to check your opponent ahead of time, think about what kind of hand you want to keep. So Orcs tend to go wide, they tend to kind of get out there somewhat fast. Um, I don't love starting with something like Sacred Bolter, usually happy to draw that later. Um, I think it's fine to keep the Sergeant in, it's going to be probably pretty decent against the Orcs, and we've got two cheap cards. Uh, which can come down earlier, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's right, baby. We are Ultramarines. Okay, so always good. Definitely want to teach y'all kind of what the matchups look like. Always good to know exactly what the Warlord does. So for um, Grook, who I played a bit of today, which is really fun, um, you get a, you get to draw a card and give a plus one melee attack, um, which is definitely just a great ability to spam early. Um, here, so we have the option, obviously, to just go Master Fleet and ping this. Uh, I'm just going to run out the Interceptor. I'm happy to trade damage here as well because we're just pretty aggressive. Um, and I think I'd rather play the unit here because I know that they're going to run out units and this can survive an attack by it, so... Uh, just feels like a good two drop to run right out there. So now we've got plenty of options. We could just we could go master of the fleet and attack this. We could and then play our scout. Um, I think here we just have an optimal trade to kill this with our interceptor and have it live. And then if they want to attack it back, they're going to take another four. So just feels like a pretty efficient card to put out there. Then we'll just hit their face. Four, pass the turn. So we're up a couple life. Our units are pretty low, but uh, they're going to have to trade here. Okay. Computer doesn't really know <laughs> to maybe make the optimal trade. Um, here, I think now we have a really clear incentive to use Master of the Fleet, because when we Master of the Fleet, it's going to put one damage here, and then we get to kill this off with Interceptor and get a really nice two-for-one, or a three-for-one, I guess. No for one out of it getting ahead of myself all right so let's do that first boom boom trade those units and this thing gets bigger when they do physical attacks so getting that off the board i think definitely feels fine and we could use high factory but i think i'd rather save it to smooth our draw when we have like an awkward codex turn um and we're just kind of humming along by just playing our intercessor here Ooh. That is unfortunate. This card, I've definitely liked. Um, it is random, so obviously it can hit your Warlord, but when this thing just eats uh, a unit, it feels pretty good. 
So now we've got some decisions to make. Um, but I think because this card is not the hardest to kill, um, I think I am probably going to drop Intercessor and then drop Hellblaster um, and make them sort of have to attack through this. And I'm going to keep... Actually, so if they try to ra double range kill this, that'll be pretty good. I probably should trade some health here to make sure this dies. Because then it, at the very least, I can make sure the Hellblaster kills it the following turn. And we're just using all of our energy every turn as much as we can. Ooh, that guy is pretty annoying. Yep. 6-4 flank. Pretty good. I don't have this card. The Veteran Storm Boy, but really like that. So we definitely took some damage there. But we're certainly not in too, too much trouble. Alright, so got a few options here. So we can... Deal three to their Warlord. It blasts out, killing this, putting two damage on this. And then I can Master of the Fleet, trade here. I'm going to take four, go down to nine. But then I can play Electus and Blind here. Or I could play Sergeant. Oh no, it has to be Electus in terms of mana. All right. So I think this is the play. Get a really efficient splash there. And yes, we're going to take some damage, but we definitely want to get that off the board. And I actually, I should have, I actually should have played Electus first to see if I could blind that and, and dodge out on the damage. That was a mistake. Going too fast. Pretty good turn for us, though. We cleaned up their whole board. We're going to go to six here, most likely, attacking us. But we've got, okay, so they end up attacking that unit. So we got 5, 6, 7, 8 total damage, 9, 10, 11, right? 1, 2, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yep, that's lethal. Yeah, kind of out of nowhere, actually. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Boom. There you go. Very quick game. <laughs> super, super quick. Um, and for those of you who missed it, so three skulls is for killing the enemy warlord, which gives you 50 gold. That's how you're able to farm some gold to open packs with. Um, and we got some raiding, uh, which feels a little odd against the bots, but, you know, it is what it is. We got to earn that gold to be able to go to our cool shop and buy the packs. But let's just hop into another game since that one was real quick. Okay, probably playing against an Eldar bot. <laughs> you can tell because they don't have the alpha sleeves, which I think pretty much everyone is rocking. But again, uh, it's nice to actually have just a different matchup. So we saw how Orcs went, which was pretty aggressive, pretty close. This is definitely going to feel, I think, more like we're the aggressor in this matchup. These are all good. Um, Jeez. I think I'm actually going to put back the bike. Because I think uh, Hellblaster is going to do some work against kind of their, their little Eldar people. So Galen, I really like. I've, I've played her a bit. Um, her ability is just spawn a 2-1 shuriken one with waystone, um, which is just excellent. So you're going to see kind of the interaction I talked about earlier. So... What we do first is we're just going to optimally trade here, only take one and deal two. And then we're going to master the fleet. Deal one to their warlord and kill their waystone. Waystones really enable the deck to do some very powerful things. So every turn we're able to deny that um, is a fine turn in, in my mind. Because we're going to stay even basically on life and we're just pretty much answering what they're doing each turn. And that is totally fine. So, and we might actually, we could actually even get a little bit ahead by using our high factor if we want to. But honestly, I don't even think we need to. Here, we're going to do the same thing. And then next turn, we'll probably be able to play 
intercessor or point blank while doing the same thing. And this sequence just keeps them off of having waystones and keeps them off developing, obviously. Okay, this, this Viper is pretty annoying because it can deal a total of six damage ranged. So, how do we want to do this? So we could trade our Interceptor for it. Or I could make them trade this for the guard. I guess Interceptor is a little bit... Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. Trade that. That's fine. And then I could put a 2-drop into play. Like I could play Firstborn, actually. And then what am I doing next turn? I'm not going to hit Codex next turn with this. Oh, no, I could with Hellblaster and Point Blank. Um, I, I think this is... I think this is fine. It's not like essential, but I do want to play this pretty aggressively because they're mostly going to use their ability almost every turn to just keep trying to develop. Okay. Alright. Don't love that. This guy's pretty annoying to take down. Interesting. So we can give this four. Trade off this and this attack. And then play a four drop. That seems fine. We could also go for the Electus, actually. Kind of like that better. Maybe we actually get lucky here. So let's... Either way, we're going to do it to you. Get the one damage. Okay. We didn't get the blind, unfortunately. So take three here. These will trade, though. Which is fine. And then we maybe get another bite at the apple next turn with our uh, Sergeant Electus. If we had blinded the, that unit, that would have been a huge turn for us. But it's a 50-50 there, so can't can't be too upset. Alright, so this is Shuriken 3, so it's attacking for 7. That's why Eldar is so scary, because <laughs> they can do stuff like that. Uh, so we have double Electus, so we might just <laughs> be able to... Uh, to try and do something. The only problem is... So we don't have a great way to kill this. So I actually think... We definitely want to put Honor Guard down just to kind of... to guard with. Um, and then the question is, would I rather Intercessor or Master of the Fleet? Intercessor kind of guarantees that we're able to keep this alive, even if they have multiple units. So I think... Let's do that. Just more. Okay, nice. All right, so we have a choice here, right? We could deal four to this, basically guaranteeing that it's dead next turn, obviously with point blank, or we could deal seven to them. But then we would take... But they're not going to be able to attack us next turn, which is pretty nice. I think here, let's just go aggressive. We're ahead on board. He's not able to, like... He can still deal six, technically, if he wants to physically attack here. But I'm going to see what we can do. Maybe it was a mistake. But, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think you just kill my, my better unit. But that's fine. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep, so that's lethal. Man, it just feels like you're able to get, to get lethal so, so easily. Um, let's do this. Oh, and we drew a card? Is that what that card does? Did I not even know that? Where do I get to see... Hands of Death. Wait, why did I draw a card? I'm so confused. Huh. Alright, I must be missing... <laughs> 
<laughs> must be missing something. Get the perfect image. Boom. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just trying to steamroll our opponent. Um, all right. Again, another pretty quick game. So I'll see if we can try and get one more. Ideally against a real person would be nice. Okay, interesting. We're against the other one of the other Space Marine Warlords, Varro. And I remember playing him. I really liked. He allows you to pick multiple psychic abilities. Um, pretty nice, honestly. Pretty pretty cool card. All right, so Storm Raven out the gate is not going to be terribly good, but these are all great. We've got two, three, four. Happy to keep this hand. Well, someone's got to fail. We're both ultramarines. Hopefully not us, but... Honestly, I would say probably out of one out of every ten games, the computer gets me. So. They can get there. Alright, since I want to play Hellblaster next turn, I guess it's reasonable to just run out the Intercessor. Maybe be able to soak up an attack and then resolve that. That seems fine. Uh, bike is going to... Oh. Sure. I think there, just all, if you're not a computer, uh, you just 100% kill my unit because that's definitely better than shooting two to my face. Um, okay. Let's see. So we don't really have a great way to set up Hellblaster, but it can survive an attack, so we probably just trade... Actually, no. I could just trade my health here, play Hellblaster. I think that's fine. Leave this. Pass the turn. This guy's great. Rally blind an enemy. I really hope to open. It's probably one of the better one drops you can play. Octavio. Sweet. So they trade there. Oh, we did get blinded, though. Of course. So that kind of sucks. We do still have Blast, though, so we can actually just trade one for one here um, and get a little bit of value. Get to deal two. And then it's probably just Apothecary. I mean, there's no real reason. So here we're not spamming our Master Fleet ability. We could go Master Fleet into Intercessor, but I just want to keep getting ahead on board. Got to heal that. Very nice. Attack. Pass the turn. And this just feels so much better having these cheaper cards in our hand to kind of combo off a little bit more aggressively. Okay. It's got a couple ways we can play this turn. Um, this is going to die almost guaranteed unless it were to get healed by the Apothecary, which is going to be pretty unlikely. And there's no way for us to... I, I'm not going to not attack, I think, that that's pretty bad. Um, question is, how do I want to do this? I could do three. Yeah, I think I'm just going to trade some health on my Warlord here. Three, three, we get some splash damage. So we get some health here. And... This has done its job. We're going to get another health proc. I hope it goes on the Apothecary. And we could go 3-2. But I'm just going to go Sergeant here. Nice. And getting the health proc there, obviously, is excellent. Means it should live this turn. So, we've got the board presence. Okay. Well, Veteran is annoying, but we've got many tools to deal with it at this point, which is excellent. All right, so it's pretty weak to range attack, obviously, so we just get to do this. Splash for another two. Trade some health on our Warlord to take that off the board, which is totally fine. Um, we kind of have our pick of the litter here, but I think it's just going to be four. Let's... Actually, probably just guaranteed if we just... Play this, and then 
Let's get our uh, codex here. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nasty. Yep, deal five damage to that, but got a lot more where that came from. Yep, that is fine. Okay, so, yeah, it doesn't really matter. What we do here, we get to have it all. Boom! Get blasted. Got our flamethrowers and punch them. Very nice. Okay. All right, folks. Well, I think we will call it there. Um, sorry, didn't get any real people <laughs> on the ladder. Um, just if you're curious, uh, I think I figured out the leaderboard is, in fact, the top 15 uh, trophies. Uh, if you come from Spell Slingers, that's trophies is what we call these, but I guess these have their own name, like skull, Skulls, I guess. Um, so right now we're at 10. Obviously, we've got Wazdaka, um, Shrigma, Elkasur, a couple of these folks I've seen. Captev, I think, is a Russian player who does some streaming. Um, definitely just winning up a storm, whether that's against bots or other players. Um, but yeah, even just like, I've definitely been playing a lot over the last couple of days, um, but it's not too, too hard to farm up, which is nice. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I will leave us there. Um, this is the deck. Hopefully at some point we'll have a way to like uh, put it on clipboard so you can actually like import the deck list into um, your build. But um, as you could see, uh, the deck is just super aggressive and applies like a ton of pressure. Um, and I think it's not too, too easy for you to get kind of roadblocked even by some of the bigger Vanguard units, because if you're kind of optimally trading health and like getting your board position up, it's just going to be, you've got multiple cards that have blast. You have all the codex getting you a bunch of value and you have a lot of direct damage as well. Um, so I think that that is just really, really excellent, um, at applying a lot of pressure and, and the deck feels so much smoother when I don't have these seven, eight, 10 drops, um, in my deck. Like we're ending the game by turn, I guess like seven or eight, like six or seven sometimes, depending on how it's going. Um, so I think this is like a pretty good, and I don't think I'm playing that many rares in it i think um what is it point blank is a rare firstborn's a rare i think there are a couple in here but there's not a ton um we're, we're really just playing a lot of the uh the gray cards so um thanks so much for stopping by and uh hope you enjoyed the video and you'll definitely catch me soon with some more deck techs on all the different factions so stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.